Hey, we are live. We're back with another Pretty Girl Sweat Instagram Live conversation. I'm excited to see all of your comments today and also to answer any questions you may have. In addition to that, I'm really excited for Jessica Lane to stop by. She is an incredible woman, beautiful inside and out. And um, we have a lot of fun things to talk about. Of course, I'm going to dive into her, you know, love for fitness and ask her a few fun questions. You can even send any fun questions that you think I should ask her. Um, and then, you know, try to just figure out how she's dealing with this new normal that we're all trying to deal with being in the midst of a pandemic and trying to stay active and healthy and connected to our family and friends when they may be hundreds of miles away so um yeah we're gonna get into all that and more so stay tuned um let's see if jessica is here Hello. Hello. Hi. Look at your Hi. hair. That's so cool. Oh my god, thank you. Like literally I was so terrified. I was like, I don't know how blonde's gonna look when you go drastic from like black. I was like, oh It looks god. good. It looks good. And I like the asymmetrical cut, you know what I mean? Like thank that's really you. cool. Thank Stepping you. it up. <laughs> All right, well, uh for anybody who is new to the program, has not heard about Jessica. I have my trusty laptop here. I'm going to read her bio really quickly just so you can get in and out. Uh, well, Jessica Lane is a health reporter and an elite fitness professional that is known for shaping lives everywhere. She is a 2015 ringside world championship boxer that succeeded to the 2016 Olympic trials and transitioned her talent of fighting in the ring to helping people knock out obesity, combat health disparities, and fight for their lives that's pretty awesome transition <laughs> i mean that's that's pretty incredible um so you're an athlete you're a trainer you're all these things i mean i could read all of your bio it reads very very lovely you are killing it in a game um tons of press you've gotten but uh when did you first fall in love with fitness during the olympics honestly that was the transition for me like i played basketball my whole life but it was one of those things that, like, my dad, he played in college. My mom played in college, so they forced me to play. But I wasn't in love with basketball. Like, I remember high school, I just – it's like one of those things when you're when you're a child, which I'm grateful for because I don't know where I would be in my fitness life if I was not exposed to sports as a young age. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I didn't fall in love with it until I was training for the Olympics because, you know, I went to Spelman. And during that journey, I was just, like – training real real hard um i would have to like make sure i stayed on a certain diet so that i would cut weight for fights so that's actually how i even got into nutrition because when you are training especially in boxing they don't care how small you are they only care about the number on the scale wow. right yeah. so i look really small but i weigh 165 and them girls at 165 were like huge <laughs> so i was trying to cut <laughs> I was trying to cut weight because I had so much muscle mass from um, when I like played basketball and everything. So I was literally trying to cut weight and I was trying to figure out how to cut weight healthily because like boxing trainers, they don't care. They will make you sit in a sauna with a sauna suit on for like an hour straight, not healthy at all. Wow. Right? And so I was like, how can I do this healthily? So then I started studying nutrition and then I transitioned into it. Okay. So tell me. You hated basketball, right? Not, I mean, it wasn't your first love, right? Yes. Because I'm a basketball parent, and I feel like my kids are really into it. And I know I pushed them, my husband pushes them too. Uh -huh. What advice would you give to a parent? Um, like, what kind of signs would you see in a child if they're not really interested in playing a sport? Force them still. Because even okay. though I was not, even though I was not as interested, I do think I'm thankful that mm -hmm. my father forced me. Because okay. as a child, like, you you can easily quit on stuff because you're emotion-based, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't really set goals for ourselves, especially as children. Like, I remember I was in gymnastics as a child, and I wish my parents would have forced me to stay in that when I quit that. I wish they would have. The only reason they forced me to stay in basketball because both of them played basketball, and that was their love. But mm -hmm. I wish they would have forced me to stay in um, gymnastics. So still right. forced even though they might not like it or whatever. Well, I know you said they seem to like it, but force yeah. them because those habits, like it, it implements discipline mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all day long. Yeah. And it, it implements like 
where you are very health conscious. Like I have a friend, she has a child, like her daughter will only drink water. If you drink juice, she'll be like, well, you know, it's not healthy. <laughs> Well, that's good. I mean, they need to pick up good lessons from their parents. So I can agree with you more. So thank you for that. Because I just wanted to make sure I wasn't taking my kid over the edge, you know? No, no, All right. no. <laughs> all right, cool. Okay, so I ask this question all the time. If you were a TV character, which character would you be? Um. Okay, so I have a movie character. The girl okay. of Avatar, because she's just amazing. Okay. <laughs> so the girl of Avatar, but I was kind of wondering about that question, like, Cartoon-wise, the girl like Avatar all day long. Okay. If I had to pick like a television character, like in real life, that, like off of shows that people like, I would pick B and Mary Jane. Gabrielle. Uh, okay. I love that show. And then you know, like the whole reporter side of me, so I just love that show. Yep, exactly. That's that's a perfect fit. I don't know why I didn't think of that for you, but that makes complete sense. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> all right, so it's story time. Let's share your first. Pretty Girl Sweat experience with everyone. Oh my God. So first <laughs> off, I love Pretty Girl Sweat. Like, not just the fact of it just being women's empowerment, but Black women's empowerment and being able to like really understand, you're able to grow and cultivate each other. And you just see so many different shapes, sizes, ages. It doesn't matter. Like that was the best among women of color. Doing something that is, I won't say taboo in our community because there are so many women, African-American women that do work out, but because it plays our health disparities so much or because it plays our demographic so much in terms of our health disparity, it's beautiful to see us combat something all together and collectively that will help us triumph and be great. Yeah. In that <laughs> well, we enjoy uh, always having you a part of any experience because you always bring your talent with you and your energy. And, you know, one thing that I love to hear the most from people who come to any Pretty Girl Sweat experience is like the interaction they had with someone we invited. So I've never heard anything but positive things about people interacting with you. So that's always good. Aww, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Back to the pandemic. Uh, how are you dealing with this? Like not being able to go to the gym or be around a lot of your friends. How is it working out for you? So honestly, I love um, the quarantine. <laughs> like I'm just... I got two different sides to it. Okay. So I love it because yeah. so many times people in general really are so busy yeah. in our day-to-day -day lives that we can't slow down and take care of stuff that whether we procrastinated on different things, whether it's things that we just know we shouldn't be doing and we've like not executed on it, it literally makes you sit still where you don't have a choice but to just grind. So that's the thing I love about it. The thing I don't like about it is of course, seeing every single day the death tolls rising and things of that sort. And I'm kind of like worried about my sister because she's a physical therapist. And then I have another sister that's a doctor. And they're both working right now. So it kind of like gives me anxiety. Yeah. Because, you know, that's your loved ones. And I personally know people like one of my students, um, her, okay. One of my students, her cousin got the disease and he was around her father and her brother before he knew, before he had any symptoms or anything. Her cousin passed away last week, Wednesday. Oh, now God. her brother and her father have the disease and her father is at Emory and her brother tried to go to Grady, but there weren't any more hospital beds. So mm -hmm. they sent him home with the oxygen thing. So mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that so many people are dying and it's, it's like, it's unheard of, which at the mm -hmm. end of the day, God really controls everything. So mm -hmm. we as humans can't do anything, but just listen when they say say when they say stay home but like mm -hmm. my sister's working it, it really bothers me because of that and because i know like people who have experienced this that's like dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis i know people that's losing loved ones left and right so it's hurtful because it's just like i don't feel like any amount of money trumps your health yeah. like but then i do understand the responsibility that you have to your patients um and the value you take as a healthcare professional and a worker, like I understand that. 
I, I don't want to be selfish and saying like, oh, my sister shouldn't work because they're my sisters because I know there are tons of doctors that's working right now. But when you have the entire government, the president, everybody, Donald Trump, as much as I don't even like him saying stay away from people, and then you're exposing yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, left and right, like it's just, I don't know, I hate it. No. What do you say to those people out there who are like, this is so overblown, it's not as, you know, big as no, people think uh, it is? I think, that, I think that they are living on a regular circumstance and they're not really opening their eyes to what's around them, right? So you have supernatural circumstances and you have regular day-to-day -day circumstances. So regular day-to-day -day circumstances is somebody that says, you know, it's not that big. Like, we still got to pay bills. Life goes on. Like, we can't stop our life because of this, yada, yada, yada. But that's regular circumstances. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that at the end of the day, God controls everything. That's a supernatural circumstance where country to country, it don't matter your race, it don't matter your gender, it don't matter your, your what you do for a living. I don't care if you are Michelle Obama or Beyonce or the man that lives on the side of the street. It is affecting everybody. So, and then when when people get upset, like, oh my God, you know, I can't deal with this for another month or I can't deal with this for another two months or whatever the case may be. Like, at the end of the day, if people did what they were supposed to do and stayed home, yeah. it wouldn't keep spreading. So it's like... But because we're America and we're the land of the free and we're so, um, I would say, spoiled, mm -hmm. where when we have like a, a governing body saying you need to do this because we have the free will to do whatever we want at any okay. given time, we don't like direction, right? right. So people are not really listening. So, I mean, it's twofold. Like, I think everybody needs to stay home. And I feel like the sooner everybody stays home, the sooner it will pass by. Well, how are you working out? What are your workouts like? And how are you eating? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's so crazy because, like, probably two years ago, 2017, starting in 2017, when I first got into, like, finding real, real heavy and, like, studying the markets and stuff like that, I knew I wanted to travel and just do whatever I wanted. But I still had clients in Atlanta, right? So, I was like, how can I still train these people? Because I know I got a responsibility. And I don't even want to pay gym rent no more. So how can I still train these people? So I've been virtually training literally since 2017. Right? Okay. And yeah. I always love at home workouts because I always travel. So yeah. for me, it's kind of like the norm. Because mm -hmm. I, I, was always, I was already doing it. So like right. in the mornings, I mean, I will say, I don't work out on the weekend. Okay. okay. I don't work out on the weekends. I would say the only difference is that I don't run outside. Okay. That's the only big difference. But like doing like fasted cardio where I'll do like burpees, like my favorite exercise, I'll do like a fat burner where I'll do a burpees and mountain climber like variation. So I'll put the timer on three minutes and then I'll hold like a plank for 30 seconds and then I'll do a mountain climb for 30 seconds and then off and on for 30 okay. minutes. So that right there is like running a whole mile <laughs> oh, wow. and then i'll do 15 burpees and then i'll start it over and then i'll do three sets of it oh that's cool hey wait so you're are you nervous about going for runs even just out in the open with no one around you? yes wow. yes because people saying it's not airborne like do you know that even right now right if somebody yeah. sneezes in the atmosphere it will stay in the atmosphere for two to three hours you just you just never know yeah. You just never know. And so, yeah. That's okay. Nice. Food. Keep it 100. Are you eating like every five seconds like many of us? Or are you no, still eating good? No, no. And, and I think that that's because of me always working from home anyway. Okay. Like, it's so crazy. I don't really feel like my life has changed that much uh -huh. being in quarantine. Like most people, like they can't go out. Like I'm very, I'm a very secluded person anyway for the most part. Like, I don't really hang out that much. I never really used to go to clubs or nothing like that. So for me, I will always just be at home on my charts with my computer or traveling somewhere. The only big problem and big thing for me is that I can't go fly somewhere. I yeah. guess the part that I don't. Yeah. But in terms of just eating, no. Like, I feel like if you stay busy, 
I feel like people eat when they're bored. Correct. If you stay busy mm -hmm. and also don't put stuff in your house that you know is bad for you because it's not <laughs> like you can't. Right? It's yeah. Like you it. You're right. Those so, two things. Like, <laughs> yes. Those two so rules. That's, that's my big thing. Um, when I went to my parents' house, it was a little bit of a different story, though, because my parents, my dad, both my parents are out, so they eat, like, soul food. I'm trying to get them to not eat soul food. My dad, like, fried pork chops and stuff like that, so when I go there, I eat yeah. for the most part. Okay, well, have you been tuning into any of these, like, live DJ sets? No. You haven't even listened to those? <laughs> You've been like, I could care less about any of this. This is normal for me. I'm not listening to DJ yes. sets on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, even when it comes to Instagram, like I um I don't have any my of my notifications on on Instagram. I okay. put it up probably like four months ago. Okay. Because Instagram started to be an obsession for me. Where I think so many people we spend so much time this was the day. This was this is when it happened. Okay. I was on Instagram and like two hours I had looked up and two hours of my life had went by. And I was like, oh no. Because you just scroll and you get so hard yeah. you go from page to page. Then you just start looking at explore pages. Then you look at this, you look at that. Like, and it really just takes away from your forward progress for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So for me, I like deleted my whole, like Instagram is on the last page. I wish I could screen record and just show <laughs> It's on the last page of my phone. And like the only oh, time I it up is when I need to like post because of course like especially if you are a business owner and stuff like that you need to keep your engagement up because right. even me like when I don't post my drops mm -hmm. and then as soon as I start posting again consistently like it rises especially if I post like every day but if yeah. I don't I like the number at the top where it'll say like um such and such profile business in the last seven days like that number be fluctuating depending on how often right. I post mm -hmm. so, but no I have not watched no DJ well, that's okay. If you ever feel like you just want to party, you know, one night, I highly recommend <laughs> checking out D-Nice's live sets. Black Girls Rock has a lot of cool female DJs that are DJing right now. And Manny Fresh is killing it, too, um, on his page. Like, he has DJ sets. It's pretty dope. But <laughs> in the meantime, I'm going to let everyone um, submit any questions that they may have. Oh, shout out to um, at Des year underscore me she agrees with you about turning off your notifications it's very good for you so um you have someone who is right in a line with your theory um while we wait for questions i have a question for you what is your favorite deodorant since pretty girl sweat <laughs> um i don't know a secret I just always wore secret. Certain scent? Like, is there like a powder? Powder. I, I like, like, like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the powder, like, I don't know. It's the blue one. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's such it's a funny question. What's your favorite deodorant? Well, right now I'm wearing Dove most of the time just because Dove. The fresh scent, just because. Um, I mean, I guess it works, but I've been hearing that. Um, Degree is better? I ask people this question all the time. <laughs> so I'm like hearing things from like, oh, I only wear natural deodorant to like, they put honey under their arms, all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm like, I can't do that. But when it Let comes to- <laughs> Listen, one of my friends, she had this whole like theory about like, Jessica, if you're going to be healthy, you need to be healthy all the way. And you know, this causes cancer, yada, yada, yada. Like, you know, people using like organic tampons and stuff like that now. Yeah. And like with her deodorant, she was like, oh, you shouldn't use the deodorant from the store. I'm like, well, what should you use? And she was like, um, you should use baking soda. And I was like, girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna work around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so did anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions yet, but I have another one for you. Beauty products. Um, what's like your go-to? You travel a lot. So what's something that's always in your luggage when you're on the road? Oh my God. So you're going to be like, just go with the hill. Um, <laughs> this might sound so good, but it's so true. 
alcohol and cocoa butter. <laughs> oh, cocoa butter. And what else? And alcohol. Oh, you travel with the alcohol? Well, well, alcohol for your... Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, like rubbing alcohol. Yes. Green alcohol and Palmer's cocoa butter. See, now that's what I'm talking about. That is beauty on a budget, and I'm here for it. I'm here for yes, it. Yes, but it's not even a whole budget. Though. I have tried so many different, like, facial skincare regimens and stuff like that. And, like, for whether it be, I don't know, the, um, dang, what's it called? I don't even know the name of it. Is it it's not Vicks. It's something. It's blue, and then it smells like Vicks. So, you know what I'm talking about? It's blue and it smells like Vicks. Oh, Noxzema. Yeah, Noxzema. Okay. So, like, people use that. They'll use, like, all these different things. And I'm like, yo, like, all that stuff drives my face out. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, before I go to sleep, all I do is just cocoa butter. Then put, I mean, put some um, alcohol on with a little cotton pad. Mm -hmm. And then cocoa butter. And then my face, like, you know, I don't want to be having bumps. Because when you think about it, alcohol cleanses your face. The reason right. that people get acne and stuff like that is because they like stuff is oil and stuff in their pores. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you just clean your face and then moisturize it with some cocoa butter. I've been doing that for the longest, and it's working. So don't stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. All right, we got, we got some questions. Okay, so that from at Kells Jade, um, they say, "Hey friend, will only running, doing cardio workouts cause me to lose my curves?" No. No, no. Wait. The question was: Will running and cardio workouts cause you to lose your curves? Yeah, like if 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 they do running or just like strictly cardio workouts only, will it cause them to lose their curves? So it depends. It depends on what type. Like if you just go run on a treadmill for like hours upon hours upon hours, yes. But if you like do like hit cardio or like faster cardio, or you do like a lot of sprints and stuff like that, or even like. I used to do like dead mill sprints where you turn the treadmill off, like literally use your leg strength. Oh my God, I've seen that. Or that looks impossible. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> once the treadmill starts going, it's going. But like that is a leg builder. We have another question from at Ari Renee. She wants to know what advice would you give a newbie to the fitness training world? I'm trying to grow a client base. It's going well, but any advice would be helpful. Go out in the sports bra. <laughs> walk around in the sports bra. I swear, when I first started training, I just walk around in the sports bra everywhere. People go, like, oh my God, I want to be a body. I'd be like, girl, what you should come train with me. Like, because you are your own marketing. Business. That's true. When you are a trainer, literally every everybody wants, your, <laughs> wants their body to look like yeah. yours. So you show your body. And it doesn't have to be where it's like, dress really um i don't know like you're dressing very provocative and stuff like that i would just say walk around and say, oh my god i'm so sorry somebody just called me that's okay, Did it just that's okay. <laughs> yeah. no you're good keep going okay okay so yeah just you are your own like training base walk around in the sports bra like i go to a grocery store well when i was training i would go to a grocery store and the sports bra everything like it might sound crazy but when you think about it it, it kind of feels like you're walking around in miami but it's atlanta well where do you live also that might be oh that's a, <laughs> that's a good question yeah let us know where you live too but no i can yeah. see your point like people do want to be the person well, not be the person but to look like that person some way shape or form like you'll finally find someone who kind of has your sort of body type and they're at a place that's your goal and so you're like okay well if they they're kind of like me i could see them being able to train me to getting to right. my goal uh, body type so i totally get that um oh another question from at ja jamar uh the question is i want lean toned arms Five pound weights or ten pound weights? It depends on the exercise you're using, like, or it, it depends on the exercise you're doing. Like, if you're doing flies and stuff like that, of course you can't use like a, a heavier weight. But and then if you're doing like tricep extensions, like these behind, you're gonna use a heavier weight than you'll use to do like bicep curls. So it just depends on the exercise you're doing for that. Because honestly, you can even get toned arms without doing. That whether you do like hand walks 
like in planks and you do different hand walks like that shapes everything and then whether you do um like modified push-ups um whether it be tricep positions on a chair with your own body Can you hear me? Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wrap up today's live with you sharing what's up next for you. Oh, what's up next for me? Okay, so I'm like very, very big into finance. I don't know who follows me and who doesn't. I'm like very big into investing. So um, ultimately, I want to trade for like this hedge fund. So I'm praying on it. Um, where I'll like manage different people's accounts and like trade for them. Okay. Um, so that's next. Hmm. In the fitness space, I am. I have an app coming out with Tawanda Braxton. I don't know if y'all know her. Yes. So, yes. So we have a fitness app coming out. It is soon as Apple like literally passes us through the app store. So like Google developer, everything is like a okay. Everything's fine. Apple is super. Hard. So as soon as that the app is already done, so as soon as Apple passes it through the app store, then we are going to launch it. We have a deadline of two weeks, so look out for that. But it's going to be amazing. Um, we focus on like mind, body, and spirit. So it's just fit, but fit stands for finding inner truth. I love like that. Yourself. Yes. So that's Jessica, that's awesome. Well, congratulations on all of that. Keep us posted so we can share the news as soon as it hits the app store with our sweat sisterhood. And um, I can't wait to see you in real life, IRL. <laughs> Hopefully sometime soon. I'll be looking out to see when you finally ever do post on Instagram just so I can see your face. But in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out um, and I'll do the same. Let's stay in touch. Okay. Bye. Right, bye. Have a good day. You bye. too.